Newton in the pocket. He's hit and sacked inside the five. The ball is free. Denver's got it. Touchdown, Denver. That was created by Von Miller off the edge. Got by the right tackle, Mike Remmers. It was Malik Jackson in the end zone, and the Bronco defense with their sixth touchdown of the year. Defensive points are so big time in a Super Bowl. Scooping up a... <laughs> 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 See, we were gonna we were gonna put love on it, feel. Bleak. We were gonna say the man who pounced on the fumble in yeah. Super Bowl 50, but Bleak Jackson said, "I got so <laughs> many other clips." Okay, which clip would you like? Go ahead. Clip? Tell them how you really feel. <laughs> <laughs> Can I hear you? Are we on now? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's terrible. We recording the yes. plan. And Why? That was a Super Bowl 50. It's terrible. But I didn't do anything. Yes, you did. You pounced on the ball. I got off a block and I picked up the ball that was happened to be in the end zone. <laughs> Not good enough for you. There's so many other plays. Do you still have that ball? No, I threw it in the stands. You did? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted nothing Some to do with it then, <laughs> and he wanted nothing to do with it now. Okay, by the end of the show, frankly, Malik Jackson, who is one of the greatest friends on the show, when you come back, give us a new clip, and we will play it as your highlight reel. I can, I can do that. re-enter Good Morning Football. Okay, great. What do, you, do it now. Yeah, do Toss it, it out there. And then we'll see if we can. What do you want, Malik? Okay, can you turn it up in my ear a little bit? Um, yeah. I don't know. There's a few plays in that game where I got after the quarterback a little bit, had a few pressures. Um, I guess because I think that's a good uh, claim to fame as a Super Bowl. Am, are we on right now? Yeah. Yeah, we are. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is totally <laughs> Super Bowl. So, yeah, any, anything. <laughs> <laughs> There's no like, all right, let's go. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. We just transitioned straight sorry. into it. Sorry, <laughs> there was music. No, that's good. We were all c g gathering ourselves. We're oh. watching clips of Malik, and he's just like, man, I don't want to see that. Well, we were just we having a casual conversation during the commercial break. I know, so, it's yeah, true. yeah, just it's the segue. True. The segue got me. Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is Malik Jackson. Oh, everybody. my goodness. Uh, it was Super Bowl 50, a Bronco, longtime friend of the show. Um, now you're retired. Uh, you look great. Uh, you look appreciate great. it. Um, wow. How are you filling your time uh, after playing? Just to, like refresh people of, of what, you, what you've been up to. Well, you know, I went plant based, um, really just, and then intermittent fasting, really just wanted to, uh, you know, get my health back. Mm -hmm. And then what's really been keeping up my time, I went back to school. I went to uh, Stanford School of Business for small startups, you know, um, and I'm also signing back up to go to Tennessee. So just really want to get the education. And, you know, I think it's really the 10,000 hour rule, right? Like you have to be able to put yourself in a situation to learn the lingo and how to talk to people and just understand business. And I also started a business called Carolinga Partners. It's an uh, advisory service to help uh, retired athletes navigate the healthcare system and give them peace of mind and a Rolodex of providers to be able to help them uh, take care of the needs that they have. And really the biggest thing is just being a helicopter dad. You know, I have an eight-year-old daughter about to turn nine. She's a uh, avid ice skater. You know, we've been down to San Diego. We drove up to San Jose a few weeks ago to have her do her oh. thing. And uh, oh, it's been that. really cool to watch, you know, being an athlete myself and watching her uh, go out there and uh, do her thing is uh, it's it's full circle. And, and let me just give you real quickly, just give you your props and, and appreciation, man, because it's not hard. I don't think a lot of people understand and appreciate going from being a big fella, a yeah. big guy for you know most of your career, and then to be able to trim down, man. Kudos to you, man. You look good. I look appreciate sharp. it. I see pictures of myself in the old days, or the yeah, the old days. I'm just like, geez, man, I was yeah. I was big, you know what I mean? But uh, still athletic, big, but whew, yeah, it's uh, night and day. Yeah. Malik, I, I just a little advice. Save some of this stuff for the air. We're still in commercial right now, <laughs> so we want to get uh, you. No, this is this is not I live. We're, we're in commercial. So you're you're oh, doing no, great. Um, no, listen. Um, we we were watching something this this week that just brought a smile to our face, like you always do. We're gonna play the clip right now. We want to talk about hype speeches. You've been to the Super Bowl. You've been with a whole bunch of different guys who bring the juice before the game. I want you to first watch this one first because. No matter what you think about the Browns or life or anything, this, this cracks us up. Go ahead, roll Jameis. Yeah. 
What do you think of a backup quarterback <laughs> giving that speech in August before a preseason game? I, I think it's a beautiful thing. I think he needs to save some of that for the season. You know, um, it's just preseason, yes. dog. The starters aren't playing. But he's giving the young guys hype. You know, I think it's cool to be able to um, let the guys that are playing that are on the bubble really work in to get an uh, opportunity to understand what it's like to be in the NFL game and what it's like to play for an NFL team. And, and then it's the preseason. And I think, uh, you know, I think the son likes it because he can stand back, keep throwing, warming up his arm and let, mm -hmm. let the backup quarterback take that. But it's a... Uh, it's really cool. Yeah. Let's jump around the league uh, quickly. We saw Von Miller was injured with the Bills, you know, a couple years back. He tried to get back last season, really didn't get back true to form. Mm -hmm. You know him so well, having played with him in that Super Bowl. How do you see his potential, mm -hmm. return to potential going with the Bills, this de and how badly does that defense need it? I think they need him. I think that he's a stud still. You know, I think in the, in the, in the game, you know, being retired, you understand it's a – it's a very violent sport. You know, when you're in it, you don't, you don't associate violence with it, right? You're mm -hmm. just like, oh, I'm just going out there and smash my face on somebody else's. It's, it is what it is. Yeah. But then when you watch, you understand, you know, the, the cut blocks and, the, and the really the, the potential for injuries. It's tough, but I think Vaughn's a, a real pro. He really puts um, his best foot forward. And uh, when it comes to coming back stronger than ever, especially with injuries, um, I think he's one of the best at it. So I think he's going to come back and be the Vaughn of old. And uh, I'm excited to see it. You know, I think this is what year, like 20 for him. He's almost like Mercedes yeah. Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mercedes has been in the league for a minute. Yeah, I'm like, I'm man. I'm like, man, he just keeps popping. He never, he'll never go away. I said, it's nice on this side, man. Retirement is nice, man. You're not know, scared of it, you know. But uh, it's hard to give up the, uh, oh, the situation, so yeah. I get it. Malik, uh, you know, football is family, and it's such a fraternity amongst the ex-players. We have the NFL Legends community. And I hate to take this turn, but I know it's is a, a story you want to talk about. Back on July 14th, we lost one of the great NFL return men, Jacoby Jones. Played nine years in the league, won a Super Bowl with the Ravens, was a huge personality and beloved in both Houston and Baltimore. And I know you had a close personal relationship with him. Please share your thoughts on your friend as we weren't on the air when we got that horrible news and we thought it would be best if you wanted to talk about the legacy he leads. Yeah, no, it, um, you know, it was a sad story when it broke. Um, I was able to play against them when we were in Denver, I want to say 2013, 14, when they beat us to go to the Super Bowl. Um, they won the Super Bowl, I believe it was against the 49ers that year. Um, you know, it's just a sad story, especially when he's like a brother in arms, you know, somebody that really goes out there and works hard. And, and I think when situations like this arise, you know, you, you, see, you see yourself, right, and you want to make sure that you're doing the best you can to make sure that your health is taken care of. And, uh, you know, it just sucks because we really go out there as NFL guys and put our lives on the line. And then in retirement, you know, we think that we're going to be able to live, live and just have opportunity to, to just um, take advantage of our full lives. And when a life is cut short like that uh, from something that could have been prevented from just a test or two, um, you know, it really, really sucks. So, you know, that's what really pushes me to help, you know, build my company, Care League and Partners, to help guys just get the tests they need, understand the health protocols, um, you know, get back out there because, the one thing I think people don't understand is that when you're in the NFL, you get a training room and it's like second to none. It's first class, better than first class. Mm -hmm. um, and then you retire and your agent leaves you. Uh, you know, you, the, the, the locker room leaves you. Sometimes your girl leaves you, right? So you're just sitting there alone and um, it's, a, it's a lonely feeling. So, um, you know, just really want to get guys just to understand that uh, they're not alone and there's things out there that they can utilize that the NFL provides and, um, you know, other people out there helping them um, put their best foot forward. And it's also wants to you know, really pushed me to say uh, RIP to uh, Ronnie Hillman and Demarius Thomas, you know, two guys I played with that mm -hmm. uh, passed away way too soon. So, um, you know, I see myself in a lot, a lot of these guys. And so, you know, for me, it's like I got to do everything to make sure that I can stay with my daughter as long as I can. And um, so, yeah, it, it sucks. And uh, Malik, I just want to say thank you for saying that for Ronnie Hillman, a good friend of mine, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so many guys, you know, they go through that transition and a lot of people don't cover how dark it is when you go from being in a brotherhood in the locker room and getting all the love and the adulation and then you just kind of fade off into silence and you mm -hmm. start to feel like nobody cares who am i what am i and, you know you go through this identity crisis so i really appreciate you bringing that and giving uh, jacoby jones his love as well i appreciate so, thank that. you no, i appreciate that malik come back anytime all right we'll have young good morning football we love hearing what you brought to the game when you played but more importantly truly what you're doing for football players now as they try to do what you're doing so successfully. I appreciate that. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Malik Jackson, everybody, uh, remembering, as he likes to say, his brother in arms and Jacoby Jones, he is a Super Bowl champion, a longtime player in the league, lost him this summer, and he's gone too soon.